After getting knocked out of the Carabao Cup and some worrying form in the Premier League, the pressure has started to mount on my shoulders. And as we edge ever closer to the final stretch of the season, we've got some do-or-die games today in the FA Cup and the Champions League that could define my managerial career at Everton Football Club. But as ever, if you're enjoying the series so far, please feel free to like and subscribe and let's get into today's episode. Now, there can be no doubt that we are struggling in the Premier League. We've slipped not only out of title contention, but out of the Champions League spot altogether. We're down to fifth and we are a colossal 13 points now off of league leaders Manchester City. And our position has not gone unnoticed with the rest of the squad as morale is starting to slip, with even my captain coming knocking at my door, declaring the frustration in the dressing room, wanting to know what the plan is and how we're going to be moving in the right direction. And I've tried several things over the course of this career mode, the changes in formation and tactical vision, the hundreds of millions of pounds I've spent bringing in new players, but with the expectations of not just the fans, but the board as well, just being sky high this season. It seems like these players are struggling with the weight of pressure that are on their shoulders. To his credit, my biggest signing of the summer Emil Smith row has hit the ground running since joining. He scored seven goals and assisted ten times in just 27 appearances. But with the likes of Jan Kuto still struggling in the first half of the season, and with the 23-year-old Alex Scott really not impressing like I was hoping he would, something just does not seem to be clicking this season. Now with 15 goals to his name in 34 appearances, it would seem like Makoku's having a fairly decent season, but with the majority of those goals coming in the first half of the season, things have dried up in front of goal for the young German. Now to his credit, Brian Brobby did have a struggling start of the season, being usurped in the starting 11 by that man Yusuf Makoku, but he has pulled his head up and he has managed to get himself back on track, but with just 12 goals in 22 Premier League appearances, once again, I really need more from the man from Netherlands. The problem is though, things aren't about to get any easier, in fact they're about to get much more difficult as we are heading to Manchester City in the FA up our last real opportunity this season of domestic silverware and of course we have to go up against the team that are leading the way in the Premier League at the moment. Manchester City are absolutely rampant and they beat us comprehensively the last time we played them in the league. We've got to try and see if we can turn our poor form around here today. Obviously going into this game as the underdogs means that I have had to switch my 3-5-2 formation back into this more balanced 4-3-3. Pickford starts in goal, Terraciano Gay, Branthwaite and Matson come in at the back. Anana, Damsgaard and O'Reilly start in midfield. Emil Smith-Rowe on the left, Jan Kuto comes in on the right and Brian Brobby leads the way up front. Well this is a massive game, we really really struggled against the Citizens last time we played them and they've been absolutely dominant and relentless in the Premier League so far this season. We've got to try and see if we can pull a rabbit out of the hat here today and try and see if we can knock them out of the FA Cup. Going to be Damsgaard now to try and bring this one through midfield. Can I try and play a ball into Emil Smith-Rowe who's let it run and he's managed to find his way out wide here, tries to cut it back in, got the ball all wrong and Kevin De Bruyne intercepted that one really nicely and now Haaland plays it out to Rodrigo down the right hand side, he's got the beating of Matson for pace and now he's just waiting for options up ahead of him Matson tries to come back across to cover doesn't do a good enough job, Haaland on the edge of the box, Rodrigo has it back again, Manchester City already applying the pressure here in the opening 10 minutes, Erling Haaland blocked off by Brunthwaite but they've got a corner and it's a corner that Kevin De Bruyne is going to take and immediately Manchester City are going to go short here and try and do something straight from the training ground, Rodrigo goes past to Mill Smith row, bursts into the box Matson though comes across with a big challenge Kevin De Bruyne keeps the ball alive into the danger man Haaland twisting trying to get away from several challenges Balde now has it Jan Kuto though with a huge challenge and now can we try and use his pace to escape here and try and see if we can hit them on the counter attack Brian Brobby around the corner into Terraciano the right back driving down the right hand side can he try and see if he can find a ball across here lays it back into the path of Jan Kuto it was blocked off great counter attack though and much to my frustration we can't manage to find the back of the net we will however manage to find a corner and that is exactly the sort of response I was looking for and it will be a Mill Smith row to be the man to take this corner he's going to float it in looking for the head of the big man Brian Brobby who just lifts it over the bar Edison playing with fire there at the back and Lenormand smashes it straight against O'Reilly we're pressing Manchester City high here that's exactly what I would have wanted but what looked like a pretty lacklustre clearance in the end fell straight to Jack Grealish and now he has released Erling Haaland into Xavi he's going to play it back over into Erling Haaland Manchester City back in the ascendancy yet again the the big man back into the box here for Xavi. Lovely challenge though by my captain Anana. That is exactly the sort of challenge I wanted.
wanted in that moment in time. And now Jan Kuto can try and see if he can burst into the centre of the park and use that pace. Lovely bit of play there to get away from several challenges. And now Dam's got plays it into the path of the Italian Terestiano. Can he try and float this one into the back box post? Sorry, looking for a Millsmith row. Doesn't manage to find him. Dam's got, though, keeps the ball alive. Now Ian Matson can stretch his legs down the left-hand side. He will try and play it across. Edison, though, makes it look easy. Erling Haaland for City. Under a bit of pressure from Mark Gay, trying to win the ball back high. Doesn't manage to. Mill Smith Rowe will manage to, though. Matson into Mark Gay. Yet again, we can try and hit Manchester City on the counter-attack here. This is pretty much the story of the game so far. Emil Smith Rowe got the ball wrong. I was looking for the reverse pass around the corner into Ian Matson. Couldn't quite find him. And now it's Erling Haaland into the channel here. He's got the pace to get away from Mark Gay and cuts back in. Clever attacking here into Rodrigo. Mark Gay, though, clever defending. Wins the ball back brilliantly and brings it away as the referee blows for half time. Well, to be fair, it's been a pretty tight affair here in the opening 45 minutes at the Etihad. Neither team really able to create any clear-cut chances, but I'm sure in the second half we're going to see more drama here. Teresiano to try and bring this one in midfield. He's been chased down by Jack Grealish. Manages to skip away from his challenge, though. And now Anana to bring this one through midfield into Brian Brobby. Tried to play it around the corner. Got a bit of luck there to get away from the defender in the end. Just overran the ball and Kevin De Bruyne won it back well. And now Manchester City can try and hit us on the counter-attack. Rodrigo down the right-hand side. Seems like everything so far in this game, if it's going to come, it is going to come from that man. But this time, Jared Branthwaite with a big challenge on Erling Haaland. And that will give him a lot of confidence here at the start of the second half. Millsmith Rowe round the corner into Ian Matson. Lovely done here. And now Ian Matson can try and see if he can find Brian Brobby. Brian Brobby looks for Jan Kuto. Can he get there ahead of the goalkeeper? Yes, he can. And Jan Kuto just slides the ball past Edison into an empty net. And just from seemingly nothing, we've hit Manchester City on the counter-attack and we've given ourselves a 1-0 lead. It was all about the counter down the left and side. Brian Brobby, I just thought the ball overran slightly, but Edison hesitated. Didn't come out as quickly as I expected him to and he completely misread the ball. And just the pace of Jan Kuto got there ahead of him and he had the composer just to slide it through his arms into an empty net to give us a 1-0 lead. It's going to be a free kick here. They're going to take Sean. It's Benjamin Pavard now for City on as a substitute. Flicks it back into the path of Xavi Simmons now. Lovely turn away from my defenders into Balde. Balde, though, is blocked off by Matt O'Reilly. Brilliant defending. And now we can try and see if we can hit them on the counter-attack yet again. It has been the story of the game, and we're going to continue that story right now as Matt O'Reilly bursts into the box, looking to put it onto his more favoured left foot. Plays it back into the path of Emil Smith Rowe. Smash it against the defender. Anana strikes. Drags it wide. Back Yoko too on as a substitute playing down the left hand side and gets himself all caught up there with Hato. Total miscommunication between the two Belgians and now we are in some serious trouble as Manchester City down this right hand side have an opportunity to try and pin the ball into the box here Rodrigo but Hato comes across make amends from the earlier mistake and then he's gone and lost it. This man has not been informed so far this season. He's been all over the place. Now Erling Haaland has it. Back into Rodrigo. Rodrigo, though, almost blocked off by Branthwaite. Still manages to keep hold of the ball. It's Benjamin Pavard to float it across. Mark Gay, though, is in the right brace at the right time. Haaland wins it back, though. And Haaland strikes in the end. Jordan Pickford with a big save. And Teresiano will clear the lines. Rodri into Xavi Simmons. This game in the final 10 minutes is really starting to open up. And that is exactly... Not what I want, but Branthwaite has gone and won the ball back in a really dangerous position. And he's fed it through into Bakayoko. Bakayoko on as a sub with his left foot on the left-hand side of midfield. Surely gets the winner in the dying minutes of this game. Look at the celebrations from the Everton players. They know just how important that goal was. It is 2-0 here at the Etihad. Look at Bakayoko celebrate. He's been in and out of form this season. But my word, when I needed him to step up, he did just that. Clean through on goal and on his left foot just slid it past Edison who's not had the best of games it must be said but Bakayoko will be delighted it's 2-0. It is an absolutely massive result here at the Etihad there will be no happier man leaving this stadium than that man Johan Bakayoko as he along with Jan Kuto give us a 2-0 lead at full time well they might be leading the way in the Premier League but Manchester City have been knocked out of the FA Cup it's a huge victory and a huge moment for this man Johan Bakayoko yes he might have 7 goals and 6 assists so far this campaign but most of them have been in sim games and whenever I've played with him he just hasn't been able to find his shooting boots but that will give him a huge confidence boost heading into the final stretch of the season and with us being given a sixth round draw against Nottingham Forest that will give Everton Football Club an incredible confidence boost to think that we can potentially finally go all the way in the FA Cup. Now speaking of going all the way in a cup competition with me heading into the second leg tie in the Champions League against RB Leipzig a pivotal tie in the round of 16 and on the flip side with me being now 13 
points behind league leaders Manchester City in the Premier League, I've taken a look at the morale of the squad and I've decided to make a very bold managerial call. And that is that I just do not believe we have what it takes this season to climb back to the top of the Premier League. So I am going to forego this competition. I'm going to put all my eggs in the basket of the FA Cup and into the Champions League as well. I'm going to sim all the remaining Premier League games that I have left to play and take control of my own destiny in the cup competition so that I genuinely believe we have a chance of winning this season. And that means that we are heading into this Champions League round of 16, second leg tie away from home against RB Leipzig. Faced with the huge task of trying to get the win here today and it is going to be a game that we are going to be playing. We are going to take control and we are going to see if we can pull off a miracle here in the Champions League. And with this being a game that we absolutely must win, I am reverting back to this more attack-minded 3-5-2 formation. Pickford starts in goal, Lacroix, Marquet, Brantwaite at the back, Anana, O'Reilly and Damsgaard in the middle with the Millsmith row on the left, Bakayoko on the right, and of course the two main men, Brian Brobby and Mukoku, start up front. But what a game here. Under the lights in Germany, a huge ask here for the Everton players, but the travelling Evertonians, they believe we can do it. I believe we can do it. Let's go and see if we can seal our path through to the next round of the Champions League into Matt O'Reilly. He's going to turn nicely and almost hack down, but the referee waves. Play on here. Dam's got now has it in a really nice pocket of space. Shifts back onto his right, though. Has the momentum. This attack just started to slip. And in the end, Udogi for RB Leipzig wins the ball back well. And now they're going to try and see if they can launch a counter-attack down this left-hand side. No one putting in a challenge for the Italian. And instead, he's going to try and burst through. But the Frenchman Lacroix is big enough and strong enough to win the ball back. And Jordan Pickford tries to lift it back over to him. And in the end, it wasn't the best ball. And in the end, we put ourselves under no end of pressure here as Elmas into the box. And Elmas, inside the opening 13 minutes, has put a real Kai Bosch on our plans here today as RB Leipzig take a 1-0 lead. Well, we only have ourselves to blame a shocking clearance from Jordan Pickford after I thought we cleared the danger and in the end we give it straight back to RB Leipzig they cut through the middle of my defence and Elmas clean through on Jordan Pickford could do no wrong but just slide it into the back of the net and frustratingly we've got it all to do here in Germany it's 1-0 Leipzig well I talked up our chances at the beginning of the game and my word perhaps it's gone to my player's head here as we look completely lost under the lights here in Germany we've got to regain our composure and find our way back into this game fast Lacroix to try and bring this one out of defence. Look at the pace that that man has. And he drives down the right-hand side into Bakayoko. Bakayoko looking for an option. Drives to the edge of the box. Looks for the cutback into Makoku on his right. Good save. It's going to be a Mill Smith row to take the corner. This has been a good response from Everton. Thrown into the box. Looking for the head of Brantway. Does get his head on it. In the end, though, it's straight into the arms of the goalkeeper. King for RB Leipzig down the line. Mark Gay comes across to cover. And Damsgaard now has it into O'Reilly. Turns really nicely. And now Makoku has come deep to collect. Makoku plays it into a Mill Smith row. And a Mill Smith row says, thank you very much. That is an absolutely beautiful goal. And Emil Smith Rowe finished with a plum to get us back on level terms. Well, just like they cut through our defence earlier, we cut through their defence this time. Lovely ball from Makoku, who just dropped deep in a nice little pocket of space, found Emil Smith Rowe, and he had the time and space to pick his spot. And he did just that into the top right hand corner. He says thank you very much. One all. Mark Gay into Branthwaite. Branthwaite now to try and go down the left hand side into Anana. Anana twisting away. Almost got himself in a little bit of problem there. But uh, manages to find Lacroix. Now Lacroix to try and bring this one down the right hand side. Look at the uh, turn of pace there from the Frenchman into Makoku. Tried to strike. It was blocked off. But my word, from absolutely nothing, we somehow managed to fashion some sort of opportunity. And we got very unlucky that we didn't manage to find the back of the net. But RB Leipzig now have a free kick here inside my half. And it looks like every player bar their goalkeeper is inside my half. Rudiger tries to win it back. Branthwaite heads it clear, only out as far as Brian Brobby. Anana now wins it back and he tries to play it right over the top into the path of Mukoku. He's trying to bustle his way forward. Can he manage to win the ball back? No, he can't. Klosterman now has it for RB Leipzig. End-to-end -end stuff here in Germany. Both teams, every single time they go forward, look like they're going to score. And now it is Brian Brobby to play it into the channel of Mukoku. Couldn't quite find him, though. Nudogi, who has been brilliant down that left-hand side, wins it back again into King. Turning around the corner into Klosterman. Goes past Matt O'Reilly. Can't go past Anana, though. And now Mukoku has the opportunity once again to burst forward here for Everton Football Club. Plays it into the path of Emil Smith Rowe. Cuts it back into the German Mukoku. And now he can drive through the centre to Mukoku. What a challenge from the former Chelsea man, Rudiger. My word, if he hadn't done that, we would have been clean through there for our second. Balogun now, the former Arsenal man, to play it over the top into Elmas. The referee looking at his watch. Is he going to blow? As Brantwaite comes across with a big challenge now, deep into stoppage time, as the referee
referee does blow for half time. Well, my word, what an end to that half. End to end stop here in the opening 45 minutes. It may be one all, but the game does not reflect the scoreline. And it has been absolutely phenomenal stuff in the opening 45 minutes. Can we replicate that here in the second? And can we get that much needed goal that will send us through to the next round? Now, Danzi. Tries to go past Lacroix. Can he go past Lacroix? Yes, he can. Into the box. Man O'Reilly tries to come across the cover, but Jordan Pickford had it covered himself and boots the ball clear into the path of Brian Brobby. Doesn't manage. He does manage, sorry, to win the head, but to no avail as uh, RB Leipzig win it back into Klosterman now. Klosterman down the line into Branthwaite, who intercepts well. My defence has been very, very good so far today, it must be said. Mukoku now dropping deep and wins it back. Plays it down the channel into Emil Smith row. He bursts into the box, looking for the cup back into Brian Brobby with his left. It falls to Damsgaard and down Sam's got on his left, smashes a strike down the left-hand side and smashes us into a 2-1 lead here in Germany. Well, Mikael Damsgaard has been pretty quiet so far in this game, but my word, he popped up in the right place at the right time. It just fell to him perfectly, and he absolutely smashed it from the edge of the box and had the keeper no chance whatsoever. I'm delighted it's 2-1. Jared Branthwaite down the left-hand side into Emil Smith row, turns around the corner, really nicely done into Damsgaard. Damsgaard tries to look for the ball back to him, doesn't manage to find it, but does manage to find Mukoku, who once again has come deep. Mukoku oh, tried to play it into Brian Brobby. Just didn't manage to find him, and now Doggy, the former Spurs man, to bring this one out of defence to play for a former Arsenal man. But Man O'Reilly challenges and wins the ball back well. And now Bakayoko has the opportunity to get into the box, plays it into Brian Brobby, who smashes it against the defender and is cleared away. Wait into an honor who's held together this midfield light glue here today as usual has my captain Emil Smith Rowe to fight this one into the box looking for the big header Brian Brobby doesn't manage to find it and now Klosterman will bring it away here burst through the center of my midfield plays it into Baldanzi still though even though we are winning 2-1 this is anyone's game but yet again Anana in the right place at the right time that man is absolutely world class it must be said Bakayoko manages to keep hold of the ball Feeds it into O'Reilly. O'Reilly looking for an option up ahead of him. Can he try and play a ball down the left-hand side? No, he can't. And in the end, that is a wonderful opportunity that goes begging. Well, we're into the last five minutes here. RB Leipzig, no doubt, throwing men forward. But in that opportunity, Lacroix wins the ball back. And now the right-back, sorry, the centre-back, just bursts forward here. He's absolutely full of beans. And he can't get past the defender. But somehow, he has still managed to win the ball back. Tried to play it across. But that is the cross of a centre-back. But it does not matter because the referee blows for full time. I walk over to the RB Leipzig manager and shake his hand and I salute the support of the travelling Evertonians. We may have gone 1-0 down, but we showed incredible spirit, character and determination to turn the game around and to run out the victors away from home. 2-1 at full time. It's a win that seals our path through to the next round of the Champions League. But things are about to get very interesting as we have been drawn against Spanish giants FC Barcelona in the quarter finals but from the glitz and the glamour of the Champions League it's back to the tough task of facing off against Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup and with a little bit of fatigue creeping into the camp following that game against RB Leipzig I have made a few enforced changes Pickford keeps his place in goal but Zangante comes in at the back alongside Mark Gay and Branthwaite Anana is partnered by James Garner in the middle of the park along with Alex Scott in behind the strikers Jota starts on the left Bakayoko starts on the right and Brian Robby is partnered by Mikoku up front well here we go then can we make it three wins out of three plays games here in this episode this is a huge moment for us and a huge opportunity for us to get into the FA Cup semi-final for the second season running can we do it time will tell and gels for Nottingham Forest into O'Brien in the center plays it out to the left back Gaia and now he's going to try and bring this one central but instead goes round the challenge of James Garner and now it's going to be Zangante who tries to come across hacks him down instead and Nottingham Forest has got a free kick that's a free kick here they're going to pile men forward for us then gels who's going to take it Floats it into the box, looking for the head of their striker, but only manages to find the head of Anana. And he clears the ball now into Mukoku. And we've got a wonderful opportunity to try and counter-attack here, but we just do not get it right. Nottingham Forest clear their lines. Into O'Brien for Nottingham Forest. Burst pass, two of my defenders. And O'Brien into the box here. Oh my goodness. That is nothing short of sensational. Jordan Pickford tried to come out. He wasn't quick enough. And Nottingham Forest take an unlikely lead here inside the opening 20 minutes. I mean, that was a hit and run if I've ever seen one. He just smacked it past two of my centre-backs. He had the pace to get away. And whilst Jordan Pickford came out, well, look at the replay. He left just a gaping hole at the near post. That is shocking keeping from the England number one. I can't believe it. Nottingham Forest lead 1-0. It's Onana. 
Out to Jota on the left hand side. Jota now has time and space to pick out an option. Instead goes to strike and drags it wide. Well, we went into the FA Cup semi-final last season against Crystal Palace as the clear favourites. And we completely threw that game away. Surely we are not going to do the same thing here today. But Nottingham Forest now have another opportunity. This time now to try and double their lead as hudson Adoy into Pavlidis. This time it's blocked off by Mark Gay. But we are living life on the edge here. Brian Proby now has an opportunity. Plays in Bakayoko. Bakayoko has the run of James Garner. The central defensive midfielder into the box who strikes with his right it falls to Brian Proby who just tries to dink it over the goalkeeper he gets a little bit lucky with the bounce but it falls straight back into his path and the Dutchman levels us here well, it was all about the bursting run from James Garner the strike was straight at the goalkeeper who made a real hash of it Brian Proby tried to just dink it over him but again the goalkeeper all over the place my goalkeeper shocking Nottingham Forest goalkeeper shocking but I don't care either way back on level terms it's one all Callum Hudson and Doy burst past Sangante like he's not even there and streaks down this left hand side Sangante tries to come across still doesn't manage to win the ball the two of them are tussling Nottingham Forest still have it though right on the edge of my box with Gaia looking for some sort of option manages to find O'Brien but Sangante though eventually does manage to put the challenge in and now Alex Scott can release Brian Brobby and Brian Brobby now can release James Garner this man making lung busting drives through the centre of my midfield and he still has the ball here he's looking for some sort of option up ahead of him and he manages to find a defence splitting pass into Mukoku who's going to surely cut it back into the path of Alex Scott and this man Alex Scott has doubled our lead here right on the stroke of our time we'll look at the celebrations look how much it means to him and the rest of the Evertonians I spoke at the beginning of the episode about him not living up to his price tag but my word he has stepped up right in the most pivotal moment just ghosted in into the six yard box and he absolutely smashed a strike past the goalkeeper to give us a 2-1 lead. Jota wins the ball back high at the start of the second half. Mukoku has it. Plays it back into the path of Jota. The two of them combining beautifully. And Mukoku now to try and drive into the box. Plays it back into the path of Brian Brobby. Who just drags it wide. Inches away from adding our third. Jota. Out to Bakayoko on the right hand side. Plays it central back into Brian Brobby who's come alive here today. Plays it into Mukoku. Those two combining beautifully. Mukoku manages just to bundle his way through but doesn't manage to find the back of the net. Brian Brobby though keeps the ball alive. Twisting away from several challenges. Anana back out to the left hand side. This time into Jota. Returns really nicely and Jota is going to try and play it across. Gets the cross all wrong though. In the end, it's easy for the goalkeeper. Gareth Branthwaite down the line into Jota, who's come central. Been heavily involved so far in this game. He's been displaced, sorry, by Mill Smith Rowe this season, but he hasn't lost his head. He keeps on coming, and he still is playing good football here for Everton, as is that man, James Garner, exactly in the same position. He's won the ball back, though. Plays it into Brian Proby, who strikes, and this time he drags it way wide. Alex Scott to bring this one forward. Twisting, turning, and he's really seemed to find some confidence in scoring that early goal. Found a lovely ball into Jota, who switched it onto his right and goes to strike. Tries to bend it around the goalkeeper this time. Turner is equal to it. It's going to be a corner that, of course, that man Jotter is going to take. He's going to throw it into the box, looking for the substitute at Millsmith Row. Hasn't managed to find him. And now Donning and Forrest can bring it away with Sanger. Even though we've had several opportunities in this half, we have to remember that we are only winning by one goal here. But Mark Gay wins the ball back. In lane, plays it, sorry, into the path of Alex Scott. He plays in a Millsmith Row, who plays in Brian Brobby to put the game to bed. Brian Brobby, oh, it's off the post. I do not believe it. You would have bet your house on the Dutchman scoring there. And he just did didn't manage to take the opportunity and Nottingham Forest get away with one. He has another opportunity though, does Brian Brobby. Plays it into Jota and Jota can't find a way past Matt Turner. It must be throw, tries to win it back in the end. Turner just manages to get hold of it and Nottingham Forest are living life so dangerously here but somehow they are still in this game with five minutes remaining and Gaia now has it Gaia down the line into Ansu Fati has he got the beating of Jan Kuto throws it into the box into the back post and it's on the volley Jordan Pickford equal to it we have to make sure that we keep our concentration with just a couple of moments remaining the goalkeeper is up here it's thrown into the box headed in by Pavlidis and over the bar Jan Kuto Brings it central, goes past two players, really nicely done by the Brazilian. He's gone past three players. Can he put it in to Brian Brobby who turns? Can't get away from any of the defenders, but it does not matter because the referee blows for full time. It's our third game played this episode and it is our third win on the bounce. Changing our priorities to the cup competitions seems to be working wonders for these players. As a full time here, it finishes with another victory 2 1 Everton. Not only was it a great win, but it was a great moment for this man, Alex Scott, bagging the winner. And although he has been a little bit hit and miss this season, only scoring and assisting twice in 28 games, I am hoping such a huge goal at such a pivotal moment in our season can give him the confidence to reach new heights in an Everton shirt. And hopefully, it will give us the confidence in the FA Cup because we have been drawn in the the semi-finals at Wembley 
against our arch rivals Liverpool. But with the other game in the competition being Leeds United and Sunderland, surely whoever wins between Liverpool and Everton will go into the final as favourites. But once again, after we play a few more games in the Premier League and not exactly getting some of the best results, we've dropped down to seventh place with just seven games remaining. Our title challenge is well and truly dead. And I've got to be honest, potentially our Champions League challenge is dead as well. And so after beating RB Leipzig 2-1 in the round of 16, it puts even more pressure on us to secure a famous victory against Barcelona in the quarterfinals. And somehow, after smashing the Spanish giants at the Nou Camp 3-1, we have put one foot into the Champions League semi-final. But can we put both feet into the semis and get a result here in the second leg tie, this time at Goodison Park in front of the home faithful? It's going to be a massive of ask but surely with that 3-1 lead we go into this game with absolutely massive confidence in the hope that we can do something special. Frustratingly though at the worst possible time fatigue has ripped through the camp here at Everton and it means that I have had to make several enforced changes to my usual starting 11. Pickford does keep his place in goal. Teresiano, Gay, Branthwaite and Hato do all start at the back but Onana is partnered by Scott O'Reilly and Alex Scott in midfield. Jota starts on the left, Jan Kuto starts on the right and Mukoku starts up front. So here we go then a huge 90 minutes ahead of us we've got a two goal cushion here but it must be said we've bottled big games before we have to make sure that we don't do that here today lovely ball into the channel looking for Rasmus Hoyland now formerly of Manchester United tried to play it past Mark Gay but he put a wonderful block in and now Matt O'Reilly can bring this one out of midfield and plays it down the line into that man Alex Scott back round the corner into Matt O'Reilly and now we've got an opportunity to try and hit them on the counter attack O'Reilly is surely going to try and play this one across into the pot to Mukoku on his left just took it round the corner but to Stegen was onto that and it was a brilliant save and we've got a, now a wonderful opportunity to try and see if we can score from this corner inside the opening seven minutes it's thrown in by O'Reilly looking for the head of Hato doesn't manage to find him Mark Gay will try and get on the end of it but Rasmus Hoyland does and in the end Pedri can get it clear Aaron Torres for Barcelona lovely little ball central into Vettina and now Colwell the former Chelsea man to bring this one out down the left hand side Aaron Torres lovely stuff back into the former Chelsea man Colwell Vettina has it again Barcelona in the ascendancy here in the opening 20 minutes but Branthwaite with a huge challenge showing maturity beyond his years and look at the composure just to dance his way around the challenge and now Yankuto can bring this one central and he's absolutely hacked down it was a two-footed challenge and what card is the referee going to brandish here? Jan Kuto is rolling around on the floor in agony. It's only a yellow card. And Colwell can count himself a very lucky man. Rhys James for Barcelona. Another Chelsea man. This time on the other side of defence. Plays it central into Vettina. Kunde into Ferran Torres. Into Pedri. Barcelona playing some really nice football. As you would expect them to here. In front of the Evertonians. Rasmus Hoyland into Elise. Elise into, I think it was Ferran Torres. But Pickford got there before him. Wonderful goalkeeping from England's number one but Barcelona continue to ramp up the pressure here as they win the ball back on the edge of my half Elise manages to skip round the challenge of Anana Reese James back into Elise yet again Barcelona inching ever closer to trying to find the back of the net here as Elise goes into the box Jordan Pickford though with another flying save well they're starting to turn the screw here and they've got another corner here it's Pedri to take it floated in this time it's Jota with a big head away we are living right on the edge of our box here as we frantically just try and keep this score at nil-nil before we head into half time it's blocked off by my defence and Jan Kuto can clear his lines but doesn't manage to clear it very far Ferran Torres wins it back and now he's got it again down this left hand side this time Teresiano comes across and gives it to Jan Kuto Jan Kuto gives it away for a second time we really cannot afford to be making mistakes like this Rasmus Hoyland strikes and Rasmus Hoyland just grazes the top of the net inches away there from getting Barcelona back into this game Mark Gay to bring this one out of defence looking for a pass forward doesn't manage to find the pass Vardiol wins it well for Barcelona and they are all over us here at the back end of this first half Pedri into Vecina, into Hoyland. Hoyland looking for a ball forward, trying to find Elise, but Pickford is out again. This man has been brilliant today. Mark Gay plays it down the right-hand side into Terraciano, unmarked. He tries to bring it central, almost loses it though. A little bit of nerves here as Barcelona presses high into Mukoku. Mukoku looking for the overlapping run of Matt O'Reilly. Manages to find Matt O'Reilly, who plays it into Alex Scott, who tries to bundle his way forward. Can't get past Kunde. Good defending in the end from the Barcelona man. And now they can try and see if they can hit us on the counter-attack as Vettina brings it forward. Vettina, though, plays a lovely ball into Rasmus Hoyland. He has the pace to burst through the centre of my defence. Elise out wide on the right-hand side, twisting away from 
from a couple of challenges. Still has the ball and still manages to find a ball into Rasmus Hoyden, who plays it into the back post here. Ferran Torres has it, gets it away from a couple of challenges. Pedri, my word, Jordan Pickford is equal to it yet again. About 25 minutes on the clock here in Barcelona. Have a corner, they throw it in. It's the substitute, Lacroix, who wins it well. Only out as far as Colwell. Ferran Torres tries to strike Pickford again, it's equal. Makoku twisting away from a couple of different challenges and plays a wonderful ball into Jota. And Jota ran the corner into Jan Kuto. And the Brazilian is in here. Jan Kuto to give us a 1-0 lead. And it's 4-1 on aggregate. Has Jan Kuto just sealed our place into the Champions League semi-final. Look at the Evertonians celebrate. They know how much that goal means. Let's call it what it is. Barcelona have absolutely battered us all game. But Jan Kuto just drifted into the centre of the Barcelona defence. And look at this for a goal. He had calmness and composure beyond his years just to slot it past Stegen right in a pivotal moment of the game as we lead here 1-0. Bettina for Barcelona plays a lovely little flick into the path of Kudos. Kudos though right round into Rasmus Hoyland. And just like that, just as the euphoria of getting a goal against Barcelona is brought back down to earth as they respond immediately, get themselves back on level terms. And once again, they are back in the game here. Lovely little flick. Skill here from Kudos just to get away from Lacroix. And when Rasmus Hoyland is in that place, he is not going to miss from there. Jordan Pickford will be frustrated not to keep his clean sheet here today as he's been absolutely fabulous. Barcelona 1, Everton 1, 10 minutes. 10 minutes of professionalism, calmness and composure. That is all that I ask here today from these Everton players. We have to make sure that we get this one over the line. But just as I say that, we've gone and given it away in a really dangerous position. But Teresiano wins it back. And Lacroix now can try and bring this one forward. Can he feed a ball through into Makoku? Has the German got the stamina to play it into the box? But cuts it back into Alex Scott, who just puts it wide. That was the moment. That was the moment to put all the nerves to bed. But the young Englishman just couldn't take his chance. And now we've got just under five minutes to hold on for dear life here as Barcelona are going to absolutely throw every man and his dog forward. Here we go with Pedri down the line into Elise on the right hand side. He now tries to look for an option infield. Does. He finds Imar who just lifts it right over the crossbar. The Evertonians will say thank you very much. Jordan Pickford will say thank you very much. He plays it short into Lacroix. He absolutely hacks it forward as the referee blows for full time. The crowd go absolutely wild. Everton Football Club have done the unthinkable here in the Champions League. Not only have we got into the semi-final, but we've done so by beating the Spanish giants Barcelona. An unbelievable performance across the two legs. As at full time here, it finishes 4-2 on aggregates. Well, we've thrown away our title challenge in the Premier League in search of cup success. And we're within touching distance of the FA Cup final, as well as touching distance of the Champions League final with just Juventus standing in our way. Can this team finally win after four seasons of asking their first piece of silverware in this career mode? But if you want to find out, you're going to have to wait until the season finale next time round because that is it for today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.